Good morning again. I'm back literally the day after yesterday. <laughs> Um, I didn't think that I was going to be recording every single day. And while that still is not my plan to do this daily, it just so happened that if I don't do it today, I may not be able to do it tomorrow. Plus, like I had mentioned, I'm giving, I'm doing this just kind of to give myself something to do and kind of like a new routine and set jobs. So that's what I'm doing. Um, yesterday was fun, so I filmed, edited, uploaded, and the comments are super cool. Uh, it, this obviously doesn't get as many views as, like, floss tube, but it does make me feel like it channels the audience just a little bit more, and that, um... I don't know that the conversation is a little more personal. Yeah, I think that that makes sense. It's a little more personal. And from what I'm reading reading and gathering is what happens to me sometimes too is when you're aloneness or quarantine or morning routine and you want company but you don't necessarily want to talk. You just want to listen and like just unwind and chill with your coffee. Um, then... You put on like one of these vlog things and you just listen to someone take care of the rambling because you don't have to put much brain power into it. So I'm not gonna think too much into this. Um, I'm hoping to have a new intro in this video. My sister doodled up this, well, you guys already saw it, but this awesome, like better than I could have ever expected logo with gazpacho and an iced coffee and the coco hump like the channel name so that was really cool too you have to focus on the little things that make me happy uh so those things made me very happy and like i said the comments made me happy the feedback was good um, the new sense of routine, the time that it takes to edit and put things together gives me a new job sense. And yeah, so I know I'm right, I see rambling. Today is Tuesday. So to give you an idea of what a Tuesday is, Tuesday is when the water people come. Now, the water people who come here, it's this truck filled with jugs jugs of water look it's like glowing jugs of water i'm gonna have to insert a clip our water system is hooked so those jugs are hooked up directly to our refrigerator so that we get filtered water see i think i've shown this before that is the water pump and there's my water and that goes through the refrigerator and comes out there so that is our water and the water truck still has not come. Uh, I do not know if we can drink from the tap. I mean, I think we can. I know my siblings did and I know other people have and nothing has happened. But obviously if you have a filtered water system, even if it's a pump that comes from a water jug, then use it, right? So. When I say it's a Tuesday and it's a water day, you would think that you like get on a water list and you have a set water delivery. Not here. I stay here pretty much in this position on Tuesdays and wait for the water truck to come. And I try not to watch too much TV and I try not to get too busy on water day because they only come once a week. And I just listen out for the water truck. That doesn't have any bells or ringing or signals. It just is a truck. So if I hear a truck, 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 I go and I check and then I flag them down and I put all my empty water jugs out there and, and do the water. So it's $5 for five gallon jug refills. And if you wanna buy a new 
five gallon refill, like gallon jug. And when I say new, it's used, but it's just new. It's new, it's used, it's new. And you can obviously see that these jugs have been reused a thousand times, but it's sealed with the water. Those go for, I think like $12. Um, recently I have been increasing my water intake significantly. I went from drinking zero water to now drinking about 80, like 64 to 80 fluid ounces, which is an equivalent of like eight to 10 glasses of water. Uh, so we're going through water quite a bit and I'm going to the bathroom quite a bit too. Um, why, why am I doing that? Because quarantine 2.0 is about being better and water is good for you. But so is coffee. I also don't want to get behind on addressing responses from the previous video. Um, I have this notebook. And what I've been doing is writing down responses so that I can address them after because that's the point, right? Is an interactive coffee chat environment in this vlog style. So my, well, they're, I think they're somewhat in order. They're in order of what I've read, but I don't know if they're like first people who wrote it or not. YouTube is super weird about comments and learning about comments and the way that they post the comments I think has more to do with like if it was acknowledged liked or hearted by me or by other people and then it goes further to the top versus like new stuff I don't know and and maybe I'm completely wrong I'm new to YouTube very new to YouTube so I don't know if it's showing me the correct order the correct order of the responses but First was, how many unicorn grocery items do you bring back or had family bring back before COVID? Um, okay, so during the move, I packed up in like just a, a rubber, not a rubber made, but you know, like a plastic box, all of the basic spices that you can think of to bring over here. And... What else? Oh, coffee. So I packed coffee, I packed spices, and I packed um, Venezuela. So they eat arepas. I'll insert a picture. Um, which uses a specific cornmeal, corn flour. Um, and it's a specific brand because if it's not this brand, then they'll go nuts and they just won't eat it and they just will have a fit very cultural thing. So we can't find that here, obviously. And so we packed, I think a whole suitcase of those. And when people would come and visit, that's what we would have them bring is adding up on. Not for me. I mean, I'll eat them, but it's not like this godsend thing that I have to have every single day of my life, like it is in the Venezuelan and I think Colombian culture. So yeah, adding up on. And for me, no, just coffee. Just get me coffee. If I have coffee, I'm a happy girl. Um, unicorn things here that I'm always on the lookout for is lady fingers. So lady finger crack cookies, lady finger cookies, um, because I make tiramisu and you need lady fingers for that. And that's kind of a special ingredient. So if I find it here, I stockpile it. Then during, so this is super funny, during quarantine 1.0, backstory, Pepsi products here are not as big as Coke. Um, Coca-Cola has a, I guess, factory, warehouse. They have a Bahamas location. So like all of my Coke products say Coca-Cola Bahamas. And yes, it tastes different. Very different. It tastes different from Mexico. Cokes and um, tastes totally different from US. So Baham and mm, that's not my favorite, but that's another little addiction of mine is Diet Coke. And the other kind of like unicorn thing is I love Diet Sunkissed, which I had not been able to find here at all in the year and a half that I've been here. Just hadn't, didn't exist. They had Sunkissed, but not Diet Sunkissed. 
and that's a Pepsi product. So uh, during quarantine 1.0, I think I even have a picture of this. I went to the grocery store and I was starting to feel kind of bad, uh, just, you know, off the COVID vibes. And I found a whole basket of Diet Sun Kissed. So I stockpiled that and I think I drank all of it in probably like three weeks. And then this last, no, two weeks ago when I went to the store, I had bought all of the Diet Sun Kissed out. And it wasn't that many. It was weird because they weren't even listed in the grocery store. Like they had to call someone to get them like put in the system when they were scanning. Super weird. I always say like, I have these weird, well, like I said, I'm not a religious person. I am a spiritual person, but I'm not a religious person. So I do very much believe that they're, uh, it's super weird that that would have happened and it, in like an off time. And then two weeks ago when I went, there were two random bottles of Diet Sun Kiss. Bought them both. And I haven't opened them because I'm pretty sure that's the end. So I'm saving those for really good days. Or like days, either really good days or really bad days. This one's really cool. Aggie Rachel, there is no substitute for cumin or comino. And there is. No, it's not the same. There is no substitute for spices. And there is no substitute for ingredients per se. Like a specific ingredient or spice. But if you Google it, you can use curry. So curry is a spice. And that would be the, I guess, like cousin of cumin. And curry is up the wazoo here. You can find curry everywhere you go. Curried chicken is a very um, popular food here. And curry chicken, I mean, it's popular here. I think it's popular in Jamaica. It's definitely popular in Trinidad, which has a lot of Indian influence. Um, so yeah, curry, curry and cumin, who would have thought? So when I, uh, for like a recipe from a million years ago, when I didn't have cumin, what did I do? I used curry and it was okay. Like, it's not a big deal. So, and then, do I stock up and bring back with me? Mm, yes, at the grocery store, I stock up and bring back everything with me. And in the United States, when I go back home to visit, what I do is I usually travel with an empty suitcase and I pack very minimal clothes and I bring tons of stuff back, but there's a kicker. So I am considered a resident here. Um, even a resident, it's a weird kind of resident because I'm a resident because of the work visa, but I'm not a resident, like a per I'm not a permanent resident. There we go. I'm a resident, but not a permanent resident. Um, so being a resident, when you go through, you go through immigration and then you go through customs. When you go through customs before, I don't think this is going to work anymore, but before the airport splits it to where visitors or tourists go on one side and just literally walk through. They don't even talk to a customs agent. And then on the other side, any resident has to go and declare and open their bags and pay taxes on everything that they're bringing in to the country. So best believe this tourist goes through the tourist side because uh, they don't stop tourists. And then the only question that they would ask is, where are you staying? That's easy. Baja, Baja something. I play the tourist very well. Um, but now this last time that I came in, they, I think because of COVID, definitely, they have um, like the dividers now. Now it's not like an open, just walk through layout. There you have dividers and you have to go through the dividers and you have to talk to the agent before you get out on the other side. So this last time that I brought mm, stuff, we have an exemption. So you have an exemption, I two exemptions up to $250, $350 of goods. Um, so we could use an exemption, not a big deal. But it's just a pain. It's a pain to fill out all of the stuff that you're bringing in, the value that added up, and then it's just a pain. So this last time I had to play the tourist 
and really risk the tourist card because uh, um, Gaspacho saves me because to come into the Bahamas with a pet, you have to have a pet permit and you have to have a vet certificate and all this stuff. So what I do is I usually will play dumb again. I do it really well. And I was like, I oh, don't know. They told me that like, I just have to turn this paperwork in. I don't know, you know? And so then she was like, yeah, okay. Like she takes the paperwork and then she asked, where are you staying? Well, the hotels are closed. So, oh, I'm staying with a friend and I don't know, blah, blah, blah. Uh, and I'm just like burning up inside. And then my husband wanted to die behind me because he just lets me do all the talking because he also doesn't want to fill out, fill out the form. Who wants to pay taxes on stuff you already paid? Nobody. So, uh, and like, come on. We pay so much money already. So my husband is just dying and, his, and he was telling me that in his head, he was like thinking, do I say I'm with her or not with her? Because if they catch her and they take her up in cuffs and take her to the back and do all this stuff, I'm not with her. <laughs> we, don't, we don't have the same last name. So it's super easy to be like, oh, I don't know who she is. But as soon as she was like, so I told her I was with a friend and then she asked me, um, when I was going back, the borders were closing. So I said, you know, I have a scheduled flight back, but I just don't know if it's going to be that date. And then she let me go. So I think that's the last time that I'm going to be able to bring in goods without declaring anything. Uh, another question. Any idea how long I'll be here? No, there is a chance. So our work permit, my husband's work permit and my spousal permit um, expires this December and we're in limbo again. So limbo because of COVID, limbo because of the Bahamas post COVID. Um, it has really hit the economy here very hard, very hard. People have been out of work because it's the hotel industry, it's a tourist industry. So people have been without work since March. And we, I've noticed for the first time ever since being here, um, like a month ago, I went in to go and pick up a package from something that I had imported, uh, clothes. I went to go pick up clothes, import of clothes. And when I came out, there was a little boy asking for money. That has never happened, ever, 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 ever happened, ever. So it was the first time that I felt off in the island. Um, I live here. My husband works here, I live here. So I go everywhere. I, well, used to. I used to go everywhere, I used to live here, I used to work here used to be part of this island. And that was an eye opener to see, it was a good indicator of hmm, not good. Also right before COVID, um, we had, we have a very, it's a big medium to big size luxury community style neighborhood. And there have been a lot of home robberies there. So crime is going up. And I just, I don't know. Like I said, the island is very different from pre-COVID. Very different. So that, that's another factor. All's to say, how long do I think I'll be here? Um, I don't know. I don't know. And then the other question is, would I want to stay another five, 10 years? Also, I don't know. It just depends on what the island is gonna look like post COVID. COVID really changed everyone's world and hit hard here, hit very, very hard. Um, not only did it hit hard economically, right now we're at the worst COVID rates that we have seen since the initial outbreak. Um, the ICU is at capacity, 
They're opening up hospital beds and hotel areas and opening up more COVID posts and just, it's not good. It's not good. So, ah, all of it is such downer news. Terrible. Um, now, I will say that before when we got here, we had a three-year plan. So, although our work visa and spousal visa was good for two years, our three-year plan was we'll do this for three years and then at the three-year mark, we will evaluate our situation and see what we do. Just like my husband and I as a couple. And I always had like a an emergency exit, an emergency alarm. I can say, take me home whenever I want and he will get us all on the next flight out and we'd be jobless, but we would be gone. He's really good in that. So he's very conscious about um, my mental well-being. He is very conscious about um, just me. So that's super nice uh, to know that. But at the same time, I'm, I'm a trooper and I like a challenge. And for me, pulling that plug would be failure for me. And I know that's not the case, but that's just how I feel. Guess Patrick on the hurricane. How did he go out? So we had Hurricane Isaias two, no, was it two weeks? Not even two weeks, a week, a week ago. Um, it was a strong category one, almost category two. And Gaspacho snored throughout the whole thing. I've already showed this clip, but I'm gonna insert it again. If you really listen, you'll hear, he, well, you'll hear him snoring right now. See, he's snoring. So he's snoring throughout the whole hurricane while I was just like, Am I gonna die? It was my first hurricane ever. Don't come at me, people from Florida. I know, um, but it was great. And then how did he go out? So the hurricane hit at 7 a.m.? Yeah, 7 a.m. And with our hurricane shutters, when you put them down, no light comes in. So the house is completely dark as if it were midnight. Like you, it's just a bunker. And we took Gaspacho out, like we stayed up super late because we wanted to try to sleep through the hurricane. So we stayed up until maybe two or three in the morning. And that's when I took him out to go potty for the last time. And he did all of his business, all numbers, all numbers were completed. And then from there, the next morning, so we went to sleep at 3 a.m. And with the hurricane shutters giving you the sense of that it's complete darkness, it's nighttime, but it's not, it's pure daylight. Um, he slept until noon. Yeah, about noon. At noon, the hurricane winds and rains kind of died down a little bit. So I looked to see that everything was like safe and then we ran to the grass patch and he did a number one, he peed. And then we came back in and we waited until the whole hurricane passed, which was by maybe 3 p.m. And finally when like the winds were really done and everything was safe, we went out again and the kids started playing and because we live in a complex, so kids started playing everything and that's when he did his business number two. But we had a plan B, which was we have puppy pads and we left him like in the entrance and then we had another plan where puppy pads in the shower, because I have a shower that you can just walk in and do your business. Well, dog, a dog can walk in and do their business. Don't do your business in the shower. So um, those were our plans and that's how we got through that. The last one was how I got a job here. So how did I get a job? How did I get a job? Ah, before coming here, the, the island is small. And um, I, I just know the saying in Spanish, I'm trying to think, a uh, small place, big inferno. Like um, basically like everyone knows your business here. And so, the island got wind that a speech pathologist was coming to the island. Our profession as a whole is scarce. It's not a super common um, 
physician. Speech pathologists work in several different settings, um, schools, hospitals, outpatient clinics, home health. I, they do, they do everything. So I came here and the school, one of the private schools was highly interested in me. And then there was this doctor's hospital that was highly interested in me. And so just through word of mouth, word of mouth, word of mouth, my, actually, you know what? I would have to say my husband got me my job. So he sent me the contacts through the people that he knew from the island that reached out to him and were like, oh my gosh, please get your wife into contact with these people. So I contacted both places. I come from a more medical background. I've never done any training in schooling and I have very minimal patience for school-based speech pathology. I think that they're amazing and they have a bunch of patients and that, oh my gosh, they're like, seriously, I think that they're superstars, but it's just not the right fit for me. It does not bring me joy. I ended up choosing to meet with the doctor's hospital here, hospital, doctor's clinic. It was a private clinic, outpatient clinic. I decided to meet with them during my trip here in December. Remember that I was going back and forth. And when I went, I gave them my resume and I talked to the owner of the clinic, which is one of the doctors here. And then the psychologist who is like the department head and kind of took me as part of her department, like mental health, because they didn't know what to do with me. And when I interviewed with them, the doctor basically was giving me tips on where not to work like he was like hey i highly recommend you know going private versus public you'll be very frustrated in the public health care sector um all this stuff and i was like wait so i literally i think at the end of the interview in interview at the end i was like i'm very confused um is this an interview <laughs> or is this just like a meeting a meet and greet and he was like oh wait you want to work here and so <laughs> I mean, yeah. And so then from there, I basically just had the job. Like I just had to say, yeah, I want to be here. And they, what was really difficult was the paperwork and the bureaucracy behind actually being able to work here. So I had to get my work visa. My work visa was not too difficult. I needed my birth certificate and what else? A police record. I needed fingerprinting. I needed, oh, character letter references. Like basically people writing a letter saying they're a decent person. And I think in a, a professional letter of recommendation, which I mean, that's pretty normal. So that was okay. That work permit came out. Let's see. We started the application process. January, February, and the work visa came out in April. What we didn't know is I didn't only need a work permit, I needed a license to practice here. <sighs> that was rough. So all of those documentation, I mean, all of that documentation had to come from my university, which is a very small university who doesn't understand anything international. <laughs> that was a nightmare. So I had to get apostles. Um, I had a lot of back and forth and traveling and I really, really, really strongly feel that the board of health professionals here, despite there being a grand need for speech pathologists, wanted to make it as difficult as possible to get me licensed as a, a speech pathologist because I was working at this clinic. If I had chosen to work in the public sector at one of the public health system hospitals or clinics or just I had a different name attached to my work permit, I think it would have been much easier. That is my opinion because some of the things that occurred and some of the things that they asked from me, one, were not on the application and two, made things stupid difficult. 
stupid. So my license took from April all the way to October to get. So I had six months of a work permit that I could not use. Work permits are expensive. Not, I didn't pay for my work permit, but I mean, the, the people who are paying for the work permit, they're missing out on a ton of cash. So anyway, my work permit came in, my license came in in October, but I was out of the country. I was in Europe and then it was Thanksgiving and then it was Christmas and then it was New Year's and then I came back and was up and running. They opened a new office for me because before I was like bouncing around into whatever exam room was empty and treating in closet. Well, not literally closets, but that's what it felt like and doing whatever I could and just going wherever they told me that I could be. And I finally had a home. I finally had a home. I think I have pictures of my home. And then COVID happened. So when COVID happened, again, <laughs> now I'm without a job. Uh, well, kinda. And my work permit expired in April. So and that's that. Now I am a professional coffee vlogger. It's tough. It's super tough. So I just got a new direct message while I was almost ending this. And I do want to talk about it because I'm sure a lot of people ask this because I know I had the same impression too. So is the Bahamas a tax haven or a tax oasis, right? Um, or is there any benefit for us living here? tax wise. And it's a yes and no question. It's a little complicated. The Bahamas is a tax free country. What that means is that you pay no income tax to the country. However, they do make money on taxes because all of the goods are taxed and they're taxed high. Um, Geez, if I were to be, I, I would be lying if I told you I knew the exact percentage, but it's very close to 20. Very close. There's a lot of value added tax that there's a lot of that on all products. Um, and then also anything that you import. So any product that you import, there is a spreadsheet that has a, an assigned tax percentage on top. So clothing is like 30%. Um, anything that is school is 0%. Um, toys, I think are at 30%. I mean, it's just random stuff. Oh, cars, 80% unless they're eco-friendly. Um, so yeah, tax, they get their money. They get their money through tax goods. Here's where it's like, yes, it's a tax haven, but not necessarily for us. So if you are not an American citizen or you have like dual citizenship and residency here, I mean, every country is different in that if you're not physically living in the country, then you don't have to declare taxes, right? In the United States, it doesn't matter if you're on Mars, Pluto, the moon, um, if you haven't lived in the United States for 50 years, if you have a blue American passport, you have to pay taxes, you have to. The tricky slippery slope is you can open an offshore account, right? So you, I could open a bank account here in the Bahamas and I could have money in there and money can go in and out. I don't have to pay taxes on that money to the Bahamas. However, according to Uncle Sam, I have to declare everything that I have in offshore accounts, right? But that's where the tax haven comes into play is how, like, how do you, if you don't want to report it, what is the likelihood that Uncle Sam is going to find out and imprison you? Very high, right? It always happens. You see it in all the movies and everything, but that's the offshore account and how the Bahamas works. Um, to give you another idea. So I, we do not have any accounts here in the Bahamas, none, zero. Um, my husband gets paid in US dollars. I used to, when I worked, got paid in Bahamian dollars. The exchange rate here is one to one. 
So one American dollar is one Bahamian dollar. And when you go and pay in cash here, like it's mixed. You can literally pay in American dollars and you can pay in Bahama bucks and Bahamian dollars. And it's just like a hodgepodge of cash. But I cannot take my paycheck and deposit it into my US bank account because they're different currencies. So my options were one, open an account here and deposit my paycheck here into an account here, but that's where we did not want to get entangled because it opens so many more like slippery slopes and we just don't want to overcomplicate everything. And I'm not, I mean, I wasn't working full time. My money was just extra income, basically funding cross stitch. And there was no reason to do that. So what I would do is I would get my paycheck, a paper paycheck, and I had to go to the bank where my paycheck is coming from. I would go and wait in line for 50 million years because since I don't have an account, I'm always pushed to the bottom of this never ending list. And then I present my work permit, my US passport and my paycheck. And they write down all of this information and then cash me out to a limit. Uh, there's a limit of, I think it was $3,000 per paycheck per day. But that's the limit. So anything above a $3,000 paycheck, I didn't even get close. Don't worry, don't worry. Don't look at me like I'm a bajillionaire, I'm not. But if, if we're gonna talk about maxing out, right? I could have a paycheck every single day of 3,000 Bahamian dollars, which is one to one, so that gives you an idea. And I can cash it out with no problem. As soon as I'm at 3,001, I can no longer get cashed out. I have to have it in an account. Um, now, pre-COVID. So that was another little issue that we ran into with COVID. My last paycheck with the clinic, I went to go and cash it out and they, the bank is no longer cashing out checks. So the only way that you could get your money was if you open an account. Luckily, since it was the last paycheck that I had, it wasn't a large amount. Um, the clinic that I worked at, I explained to them what happened and everything is small. It's like, it's family owned. So they cashed me out. They cashed me out my last paycheck and, and we're fine. But those are things that are like, I didn't know. And we had no idea. It was actually, we were, my husband and I went to lunch and in my head, I'm like getting paid in US dollars. Like I didn't even think about my paycheck being in a foreign currency, but it was. So that opened up that whole ball game and it was a couple of days of researching, okay, well, if I can work and I get paid, what do I do? And so what I ended up doing with the cash is just, it's petty cash. So um, for a grocery store, gas, um, I don't know, the cleaning lady that would come, um, just anything that was cash, we would just take it from my, my side hustle. And, also report it to Uncle Sam. It's really weird, like I've learned a lot. It's still very confusing. My husband's the finance guy, so he's the one who's in charge of it. And these are all like little snippets that I hear. Um, I could if I really wanted to learn more about this, but I don't want to. I have someone who's in charge of it. <laughs> now I mentioned that there are, in my first video, that there are, this is a tax haven for other people. So uh, Spain, Definitely Spain. I know for sure Spain. Um, Switzerland, Canada. They, if they are citizens of that country, but living here, they don't have to pay any taxes or anything there. And they don't have to pay any taxes here. So all of the money that goes in goes straight to their pockets. I hope that answers the question. But yeah, so if you have any other questions, I'm gonna open book. Plans for today. More floss tube. Mm, catch up on reality TV. I have some 90 Day Fiance to get caught up on, some below deck. Um, I need to, but it probably won't be today, finish Love on the Spectrum on Netflix. Very good show. And, oh, water. Mm. The water truck, which I haven't heard. Have you guys heard it? 
I haven't heard it. So water and tomorrow is a grocery day. Uh, I don't know if I mentioned, but during this quarantine, we are now assigned to do grocery shopping only Monday, Wednesday, or Friday. I went on Friday and it was a nightmare. It, I have been in favor of all of the, is that the water truck? Let me check. I have been in favor. I've been in favor with the majority of the things and the precautions that they've taken here in the Bahamas in order to control COVID. I am not in favor of this latest grocery assignment. Before, if you have the grocery store open all the time, you decrease the amount of people that you come into contact with because no one has this pressure or set time that they have to go to the grocery store. So on Friday, the grocery store was so packed, so packed, which in my opinion defeats the whole purpose. Isn't the whole purpose to not bring people together? So I'm very cranky about that. So tomorrow, it being a grocery day, I'm going to get up stupid early and go to the grocery store. And hopefully not everybody from last week is doing the same thing. So then we'll just all be together super early. But um, yeah, that's what I'll be doing tomorrow. And I don't know if I'll record tomorrow or not. I may take a day off. I'm gonna post this tomorrow. So that way there's the day in between. So you guys will have a video. I just don't know if I'll record a video. So I think that's it. That's all I got. And yeah. Well, we'll chat again at the next coffee chat about who knows what, whatever comes into my brain. As you can see, I have no difficulty in speaking and talking to myself you be you guys right there but you guys talk to me after i've always said i could talk to a tree oh and i chose a profession where i talk to people who can't usually talk back and i teach them how to respond so yeah okay okay have a good day and i'll see you guys soon bye